Hello viewers, Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot. How are we all today? Wherever you are in the world when you're watching, a huge shout out to you. Um, okay, let's start the video uh, this week by uh, thanking those who have donated to the channel and for everyone who has posted a comment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to look at the week ahead, just a broad pull, uh, pull on the cards and then I want to look at the economy uh, because that's where I'm drawn as with everything I go where I need to go based on my intuition uh, and then we'll also look at uh, President US President Joe Biden talked about that there were times when the filibuster needed to uh, be ended or put aside uh, and that I found very interesting because I think they're going to do this with the voting rights remember we saw a win in October for him. Um, also, I want to go back to my uh, last reading on the Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska uh, and the FBI search of the of his home. Um, after I posted that, of course, there was big news coming out around uh, with the SDNY investigation in the US, uh, and that's where I went with that. I felt there was a big draw to that investigation as being materially relevant um, to the former, to the ex-president uh, and the ex-president's men. Of course, alongside of that, we've got this huge, I guess, weight of the January the 6th investigation uh, and what it's revealing about the coup attempt, because uh, I think that's where we're going to come out. Ultimately, we'll see charges of um, whatever relates in the US Constitution to that trying to overturn an election result. Okay. The first to the week ahead. All right. So it's Monday morning in Australia and, of course, uh, in the US, Northern Hemisphere, other parts of the world. It is actually still your weekend. So I hope you're having a good weekend. Okay, the energy for this week. What are we looking at, please? What are we looking at the energy of this week? Okay, these two want to come out. Mmm, interesting. Yeah, okay. So I was looking at the US Pluto return chart before I started this. I was going to do that reading, but I'm, I haven't got a lot of time today. So I'm going to actually come back this afternoon. It'll be posted this week on the channel. Um... But there are a couple of things in that chart that I want to talk more broadly about um, in your, uh, I guess, the nation's chart, the Sibley chart. The uh, Saturn is in Libra, which is the sign of justice. Saturn, of course, being Father Time. Some wonder why it's taking so long for justice to come in in the US. Uh, and, and that is because it's hard work. Uh, it's not a matter of just simply going in and charging a former president. It's actually about painstakingly gathering the evidence. But um, it's not just the January the 6th um, insurrection. It's about a whole lot more. Uh, and I'll talk about that in the US Pluto return uh, chart that I'll do later on this week. But these cards kind of remind me of what I was seeing in that chart and I think you know when we talk about the US this is where we're coming out um, there's huge change going on at the moment albeit Saturn being the father of time very slow moving planet albeit seemingly slowly moving through nevertheless huge change um, the drum the drum talks about to me uh, it talks about the beat, the slow beat uh, of the earth, um, but also of change within and without. Um, and through that, uh, we get to we get to a point where we can heal. Um, and so it can be a frustrating process, but it reminds me that we have so this is such a huge time globally for the earth uh, we're confronting all sorts of issues that have been um, simmering away for decades and they're almost coming to uh, so in one way it's slow but they're almost coming to this kind of very quick um, relatively quick 
uh, point of, um, I guess, truth. Truth, where we can actually see what needs to change. And of course, underlying all of that at a very deep, because these are very Pluto, very deep, deep changes, is this steady beat of the drum. And it's like calling us to be mindful of what is going on um, to understand what is going on, to be part of that change. And we have completion. The number nine also is we're getting toward that end of a end of a cycle. And so this is like the snake's shedding its skin uh, that we have are going full, cir full, full circle. Completion. And, you know, you've got this kind of whenever we are going through a metamorphosis or a transformation, we come from what is buried up to what is very clear and very, um, I guess, the light of awareness. So we go from the darkness of ignorance to the light of awareness. So these cards, when I kick them up to that high level, are kind of um, explaining exactly or hinting pointing to what is actually going on, not just in the US, but all across the world as parts of the world grapple with COVID and the fallout from economies that have, have stalled. The UK is having its uh, fourth wave of COVID-19 despite its, um, I'd say, good double vaccination rates. They're rolling out boosters over there now. Um, Australia has exceptionally high vaccination rates now. Um, I think in my state alone, it's it's like over 16s, 90, almost 94% single dose and around 84, 85% double vaccination. So, um, yeah, and even as lockdown finished and people started circulating back into society, doing more, uh, there was an expectation that cases would rise. They're not. They're very, very, very low. Um, and uh, hospital admissions are falling. Uh, ICU uh, admissions are falling. So, but we've all wound our economies to a halt in some way or another over the last two years. Now we're dealing with high inflation. What happens with high inflation puts pressure on the reserve banks to put interest rates up and those that are highly leveraged, um, you know, we move into that kind of recession scenario. So all of these things are playing out. And at the individual level, you know, the challenges of the last couple of years where, we, where we've, you know, we've confronted our own mortality, we've dealt with it, we're dealing with a pandemic, we're dealing with a level of corruption in politics or in um, our governments that are so, so in our faces. And we've got a real reality check on, f on, on our social media platforms, particularly with Facebook, where we see it didn't only foment anger, hate, resentment for profit around the January 6th insurrection, but it's also been doing that in India as well. So ultimately Facebook will face some kind of consequence and that will flow through for uh, other platforms as well. So monumental changes as we confront what we've created. And just as much as we have created a certain environment for ourselves, we are now creating a new environment out of the ashes of the old. But first, we go on this vision quest. First, we enter as individuals the sweat lodge. And we saw like that eagle above everything so we can see the big picture. I don't ever underestimate human beings. I don't underestimate our spirituality and I don't underestimate our power, our individual power to change. So at the base of the pack, we have soul retrieval, which is what we're shooting for, 
That's what we're going for here. It's like we went to the brink. We've got to see what we did. And we've got to recreate or create again. And I think that's where we're at. And I think that the US plays an important role uh, in illuminating what needs to change. Because they are undergoing that very, very, um, almost like a burning away. Um, the Pluto return chart that I was looking at this morning, Venus and Mars are conjunct with Pluto sitting on the natal Pluto. So that brings me to uh, a question I want to look at, which means to me that uh, we are confronting whatever fruits of our labours we have created, we're seeing uh, exactly what we, what we have, what has emerged from our decisions that we've made in the past, the pathways we've chosen to take. And that is at the individual and the collective level. So um, <clears throat> I guess I want to ask, are we going to... What in terms of the economy, so one thing is, you know, when economies contract, choices get limited as well. We've talked about supply chains. Um, broadly speaking, I just want to look at what a glo what what can we expect for global economies over the next say six months? What can we broadly or three months? Okay, so we've got We've got new starts, we've got the full card, we've got the seven of swords. Um, you know, this is n not my most favourite card. It generally talks about being conned um, in some way. And we've got the son of swords, a truth emerging. And it's going to be a harsh truth. This card came forward in my reading for six months for the US president in February. So I think, you know, at the beginning of the year, just from those cards, I'm getting a real pull to uh, economic contraction, not just in the US, but worldwide as well. Um, so what can we expect over the next three months, three to six months for economies across the world, broadly speaking, for global economies? All right, so we've got the Eight of Wands, yeah. Um, things, you know, hitting really quickly. Like um, the Eight of Wands talks about like a lightning strike out of the blue in my area over the last few days. We have literally had lightning strikes. Um, strange storms, hailstorms. Um, this could even indicate very quick earth changes um, that we're not expecting. The Eight of Wands. So again, this era or this this completion cycle that we're in, you know, one of the big issues we're having to deal with is climate change. Now we have Glasgow on the thir October the thirty first, the climate change summit. Already there's been um, skullduggery. <laughs> Can I just say skullduggery with the UN climate change report? Japan, Australia. So I think it's the Middle Eastern countries have been lobbying to uh, change, to water down, to dampen down that climate change report. It is at our peril that we let those things happen. And I might add that our government, my current government, does not speak for the majority of Australians who actually want to see action on climate change here in Australia. So we have justice. Wow. Okay. So um, the justice card, you know, Saturn in Libra, again, this is going to be a big feature of the US Pluto return. Uh, but we're talking about the economy. Uh, it's like, you know, um, our consumerism, our demand, you know, where we pushed all our factories offshore for cheap labour. You know, the great resignation that's going on in the US, that's going on in Australia as well. Businesses can't just snap back after COVID uh, uh, in a pandemic. Uh, people are demanding greater choices. There is an acceleration here. My question was around the economy uh, and we've got justice here. There's a karmic 
aspect to all of this that overlays um, this reading. So that Pluto return, that awareness that I talked about. The Queen of Swords, yeah, there's harsh truths emerging here as the foundation of the reading. We have to make the hard decisions. We have to uh, move forward with um, really crystal clear decision making. No more Neptune in Pisces. No more illusion and delusion. We don't, we don't have the luxury. And I think this is what the US Pluto return is saying in that chart is we do not have the luxury anymore of indulging <laughs> I'm not indulging is not the right word of allowing of allowing uh, our political situations to go ahead that jeopardize our economy that jeopardize our stability that jeopardize the earth now if we don't make those decisions the earth will do that for us the tower card the tower card in the past. So I asked about the economy in the next three to six months. The tower card indicates that we are going to see whatever broke us, whatever broke down uh, the system, whatever split it apart. <laughs> um, and I'm just getting a dual draw to climate change and the pandemic. So massive changes in the recent past, past are influencing this question. What's in the sky? The lover's card. The lover's card. The north node was, uh, I think, wasn't it? It was in Gemini, moving into Taurus. This is what's crowning our reading. Um, the lover's card is about relationships. It's about coming together. I spoke about Facebook fostering anger and resentment. It results in destructions of systems, ultimately, for what? Mark Zuckerberg's profit level? The big tech's profit level? The real con very the very real consequences of ooh, the seeds that have been sown are crowning this reading. And at another level, love talks about life affirming relationships, life affirming decisions, a de you know, decisions to pursue peace, not war. A decision, decisions to pr pursue, um, uh, I guess, love, not hate. The lover's card, coming together and unity. The Pluto return chart for the US is the 22nd of February, 2022. That's when Pluto becomes, sits, sits right on the US natal Pluto. Transiting Pluto sits right on the natal Pluto. 22nd of February 2022. The numerology of that. Number two is about unity. And it's all it's all kind of sitting in Capricorn. <laughs> so, um, you know, dealing with this, a lot of the it's like making money out of hate, making money out of division. Uh, that's the really terrible truth we have to confront. And uh, I think those that are stoking the fires of hate, there's some kind of karmic, karmic cycle occurring here. Always operate from your higher self. That is the other the other aspect of this card. Now, in the immediate future, we have the star card. This is not a hopeless situation. Saturn in Libra. Saturn in Libra. You know, Saturn being that slow-moving structures, stability in the sign of Libra justice is an indication that when we see the justice card there, when we see Saturn and Libra together, because Saturn is exalted in Libra, it is the in the sign of the greatest inner position and in the sign its placement is uh, supercharged for the maximum awareness. And as a result, we can see a glimmer of where we need to go. And that's what the star card is telling us. The full card, we've got, 
new starts occurring. So even though this is this is a difficult period, it's ultimately leading us to that that start of a road that we can glimpse there off in the distance. But we still have to move through that that darkness toward the light of awareness. Where was that card that I pulled? Still moving through that darkness to the light of awareness. The drum, the drum beats for us all, for humanity. The Queen of Pentacles, I asked about the economy. This is economic stability. So as, as our whole structures are, are changing, those that are working from home in Australia, some of them want to stay working from home. They don't want to go back into the office. Um, people's consumer habits are changing. Uh, you know, those that have leveraged themselves high debt levels, uh, as inflation rises, things are going to be cracked open. All of this is a changing world, including a cha changing economies. Anyone who is operating under the old system is going to be left behind. Now, the Nine of Swords, there is so much anxiety at this time. Fear. Fear. And I, I just want to say that seeing the star card, we can see what is down the road. We can see where we want to go. We're not powerless in this situation. The nine of wands. The nine of wands. A lot of nines here. So this is battle weary. This is you've been through the battle. You need to put some boundaries in place. This isn't the nine of pentacles. This is the nine of wands. This is Sagittarius energy. So this is about finding balance. This is after the battle, after the major life change. We need to learn the lessons. And in order to learn the lessons, we've got to put the boundaries up where they should go. So in a very simple sense, this is erecting the fences that, that need to keep out what led us here. So there is a, a, going to be a huge period of economic reform as well, is what I'm hearing. And we've got the four of swords. Why? As a result, because there's going to be a contraction, a contraction of the economy. And we've got the devil card. Greed, avarice, being chained, driven to rank consumerism, rank capitalism. The greed, the billionaires, the <laughs> this is where it's led us and this is what's got to change. So in order for things to change, we have a contraction, breaking down of structures so we can see what is toxic. We need where we need to put the boundaries up. This is what the queen, this is the gift, the queen of swords brings forward this strength, wisdom, to make those decisions. And so, you know, what what is the counsel here? You can transpose all of these um, situations to the, uh, to the personal, to your own environment. It's uh, a reality check for us all. Um, we've all been impacted by the pandemic we're all impacted by climate change we're all impacted by the, the graft and corruption that has been sown and seeded in our political systems for decades greed is good was the catch cry of the 90s we're reaping what we've sown and that's what pluto is about that's what saturn's about 
That's what that great conjunction was in at the beginning of 2020, which delivered us two years of pandemic, two, li two years of, of, of literally halting, stopping our economies, two years of uh, political, a political mess that has left the world um, unstable. We get to, we're getting to see all of that. So uh, the Great Resignation is also happening in Australia as well. People don't want to go back to poorly paid jobs. People are questioning why they are living from mouth to mouth, week to week, when billionaires aren't paying taxes. So I, I'm, going to, I'm going to say that this time is about the great change. So I'm not going to read on uh, the filibuster. I'm just going to leave that there as the kinds of energies that we're in this week that are permeating around and how that might affect, uh, affect us economically in relation to, finance, uh, to climate change. It's all wound around in the same thing. If people don't accept that climate change is happening, then... Crops are destroyed by hailstorms. Um, fires burn. Uh, we get freak weather events. We're, we're going to be brought to the t table one way or another. Um, and so that's that Aquarian energy as well. Um, Saturn is in, in Aquarius at the time of the US Pluto return. Uh, there's some good things in the transiting and the natal chart for the US. Um, and that Saturn in Libra it will, it is being activated right now. So uh, this is generational change. This is the seeds of change that will take us into a new era, and that's what we're talking about here. So economic contraction over the next three to six months. Um, we have reform. It will be a period of reform, uh, and we have change. The great change. So what is that drumbeat saying for you? Where in your life at the individual level do you need to let go of the old? Because that's what this is about as well. That's what Pluto energy is about. It's about doing the work to let go of the old. Why? Because we bring in the new. All right. Thank you for tuning in. It was a bit of an esoteric reading uh, here, big picture reading, but they're good too. Thank you. Bye.